Hello and welcome to Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. I am Jay Cluett. And I am Mark Trade Secret Hoffmeyer. I meant to say I am Jay Topside Cluett. I forgot, goddamn. <laughs> Either way. Uh, <laughs> uh, on this podcast, we are, we analyze the Deep Blue Sea franchise chapter by chapter. This week we are doing Deep Blue Sea 2, chapter 6. And what happens in Deep Blue Sea 2, chapter 6? Well, let me tell you. A lot of mic. A lot of and, mic. Uh, <laughs> a lot of mic. Uh, not not for much longer, but uh, yeah, with with the surface being damaged and having seen the remains of Lawyer Craig through the window, Daniel Kim is freaking out, but is consoled by his wife Leslie to the annoyance of Carl Durant. The group realizes the sharks could easily escape, but are staying to presumably eat the crew out of vengeance. So the team try to think of a way out. Durant volunteers Mike to ride the DPV topside to phone for help. Trent Slater and Dr. Mr. Calhoun bicker about who should go, but Mike heads off, saying the Sharks can, and I quote, suck my ass. Watching through the window, the crew see Mike get knocked out by a bull shark, but Trent swims out and brings him back in to safety. Misty, now wearing a strategically zipped wetsuit, performs CPR and revives Mike, who then bends down to retrieve something from the water, only for a shark to leap out and bite his head clean off. Misty, Carl and Aaron argue over killing the sharks but this is cut short when they lose pressure in the room and the wet lab explodes upwards sending everyone scrabbling to get out leslie floats out into a green corridor and is knocked unconscious daniel ends up in a blue corridor trying to find her misty and trent make it to a blood red corridor where trent reveals that the corridors aren't locked off from each other so the baby sharks could be anywhere durant wades through an orange corridor whilst aaron and josh are in a green corridor possibly the same one as the unconscious leslie and the chapter ends with Aaron and Josh trying to make it to the crew quarters to be furthest from the baby sharks. Misty and Trent heading to a potential way out they hope isn't flooded. Durant just waiting somewhere. And Daniel looking for Leslie who, still unconscious, has now floated from her green corridor into a red one. And who is joining us to discuss the BBC 2 Chapter 6? Where it's from Why This Film Podcast and Through Dangers Untold, it's Emily Slade. Emily, welcome to BBC The Podcast. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Sorry for making you sit there in silence during that monologue. No, it's it's fine. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was, like, running through the movie in my head. The movie, by the way, which has 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is <laughs> so unnecessary because I went into this movie with no expectations, a very limited memory of Deep Blue Sea 1, except for, like, that moment. And I freaking loved this movie. It read the assignment... It delivered on every single beat. It gave me not only what I wanted, but it blasted my expectations out of the shark-infested water. Like, it was so much fun, and I just really appreciated it. And what a gem of a chapter. Chapter (laughs) 6, I'd like to call it Baby Shark the chapter oh, um you've just broken the cardinal rule of the podcast there'll be no! no singing with the baby shark song i love it i love it we need to do it more i've made a promise to the listeners any baby shark singing will be edited out no! promises are meant to be broken <laughs> just just do the first half of that sentence so people are like damn i wonder what she said <laughs> it um, must have been something provocative jeez are we <laughs> It's so much fun. It's a. I went back and watched the like everything wrong with the Deep Blue Sea because I didn't want to have to rewatch a movie from nineteen ninety nine if I didn't absolutely have to. Oh, um, okay. And Shots yeah, and I was okay. like, this movie looks like it genuinely sucks in comparison to this movie. Like this movie looks better than the first one. It's shorter. It's more efficient. Nobody sucks anyone's face off. Spoiler alert. Like it just. You can cut that out. I, sorry. I just. It was so <laughs> good. Fine. There was no like. <laughs> massively provocative bit there were a couple of moments where i was like come on guys but they're like beyond that it was really diverse casting like i was just was like this is so great like it read the assignment it turned up did what it needed to do i was like thank you deeply c2 i'm very happy now and it features a bull shark delivering a liver shot on a burly south african (laughs) that bull shark levels Poor Mike, right in his side. Beautiful liver shot that just takes him out for the count immediately. Oh my god! And it made me so happy. It, it, it's a beautiful moment because it obviously, more than anything, obviously, uh, Rem goes straight back to Deep Blue Sea One. The only no offense, I know you guys did a whole podcast on it, but the only bit that anyone ever remembers of that movie is when Samuel L. Jackson gets like beaten, eaten by a shark, and it and it does. It's doing that moment, but the movie knows 
that it's doing that moment because right when it happens, the music change or the music comes in, but the music's like price of admission, it's deep blue C2, yeah, let's go. And I was like, Yeah. It's it's very different to the musical sting after Sam Jackson gets eaten in, in Deep Blue Sea, where it's like a, a choir kicking into action like, yeah. oh, I can in, in the background. It's it's haunting whereas sort here it's like yeah, yeah kick ass let's go yeah the exactly. double bass kicks in it sounds like an avenged sevenfold song yeah <laughs> i mean like, it's not even corny like the 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 song that kicks in it's not just stock music because they actually added a double bass like drumming in there like that's pretty legit like they they, they found some good stock music for that or the yeah. person who did the score had just found a, a metal i don't know a, a instrumental band and had them play it but yeah it I do like the rock music. It's pretty it's, good. It's, it's fun. It's brilliant. It's like, welcome to Deep Blue Sea 2. Let's go. And then it just, that's the sort of call to adventure part of the movie, I guess, where things, like, we've had so much establishing, and you're like, okay, I kind of care about these people. Like, I definitely don't care about you. I can't wait to see you die. Like, I know that you're probably going to die, and that's very sad, but, like, I'll make my peace with it now. And then the sharks are like, you ready? You ready? Everyone's ready? I'm pregnant. I'm no longer pregnant. Let's go. And the music's like, Fan. yeah, it was just really fun. And there's some wild, like, people do stuff really quick in this scene. So mm-hmm. when Misty goes over to the clothing rack in 55 <laughs> yeah. seconds, she's ready to go. She got, got over clothes and she's in the wetsuit. Do, do you see where the clothing rack is? The clothing rack is directly behind Trent. And everyone is looking at Trent. So she's getting <laughs> changed right behind Trent with everyone staring at her apart from him. And I don't know if you've ever tried to get into a wetsuit, but that takes so much time. They are so yeah, awkward to yeah. get into. They absolutely. If are. they would have had her in the background hopping on one foot, <laughs> that would have been really. <laughs> you, just, you hear a splash when she falls into the wet pool accidentally. Yeah. Like, exactly. You got one and then, leg in. And then when when she and Trent are arguing about who's going to get in the water, Mike in ten seconds gets in the <laughs> water, puts on his scuba gear. Has in the water, has like his goggles on and uh, the the what respirator, the breather, and he's in the water in ten seconds. These yeah. people are very efficient. They're they professionals. Are on it. They heard they the music. In, they get out. They know what's on. Oh, the music hasn't even kicked in yet. Yeah, no, they're just very yeah. efficient. Like big, big fans. Mm-hmm. And I love, I love. I think my favorite character has to be Aaron. Um, Nathan Lynn <laughs> plays him with such beautiful choices. He basically was like every line that I deliver is going to have like a panicked crescendo and it's just going to get like louder at the end of every sentence. And like, that's just how I'm going to sort of be at, especially from this moment on, because he really starts to freak out. Yeah. If we've got to pick an MVP of of the chapter, then it's, it's either Aaron or Mike. This is Aaron or Mike's chapter. I I don't know. Mike, it's Mike gets himself got in this. He He, does. I can't. I, I like that Mike volunteers. Uh, I like he that he doesn't survives. volunteer. He, oh yeah, <laughs> he gets survives. Calderon volunteers. Him. He survives a liver shot from hell, from a shark. And uh, I don't know. Okay, does he want the shark? Does, I hate saying these words, but does he does he want the shark to suck his ass or kiss his ass? Because <laughs> yeah. there's two different variations yeah. of it in this scene. <laughs> yep. It's like someone couldn't quite decide and he like misread the line or was like, I'll go with both and see how that sounds. I'm South African. People will put it down to like that, I guess. Yeah. Just right. never yeah. put your head over a pool. Stop no. putting your heads like Placid. Does. This, there's so many decapitations that happen because people just look over the water. Stop I love it though because it's, it's still at that moment, isn't it? Where they're like, okay, we've realized these sharks are probably a little bit dangerous. We don't ideally want to get in the water with them, but they think they're fairly safe where they are. And I love it when, this is the thing, in certain bits of media, I hate this. And then other bits of media, I'm like, yes, give me more. Where they kill a character only to then like resurrect them and they're okay. Only to then immediately kill them then again, but much worse. And this is what happens to poor Mike. And I was genuinely tense. I was like, gosh, what a what a mediocre way to go in this shark movie. Oh, he's back! Yeah, he seems really cool. Like, I haven't spent much time with him, and I really enjoy... I'm looking forward to seeing how he deals with the... Oh, and he's gone. He's, he's, he doesn't have a head. Um, as Aaron so beautifully puts it. It's like uh, George in Daylight, isn't it? 
Like when yeah. they, everyone saves George. It's, <laughs> Sorry. it's and, nothing like George in daylight. <laughs> George in daylight is traumatizing, upsetting, unnecessary. Here, they do what you're supposed to do. Not to skip yeah. ahead. I'm going to skip ahead. But like what they should have done with George is what they do do with Aaron. And I honestly was sitting in front of my laptop saying out loud and do a jump scare to bring Aaron back because off-screen death doesn't count. And now this will be my jump scare to bring Aaron back because this is what needs to happen. And they did a jump scare and they brought Aaron back. And I was like, thank you. Not like George and Daylight. He deserved better. <laughs> yeah. I wish they would have let Mike die with that liver shot because later on in your movie, you're like, wait a second, did he get rammed and die? Like, that's the weirdest death that I think I've ever seen in a shark movie, just death by ramming. I don't yeah. think I've ever seen a death by a ramming death in a shark and movie. It's, it's the, set up in, in Dr. Mr. Calhoun's uh, lecture at the start when she talks about how bull sharks, they ram you, they knock you out, and then they, they eat you later. So mm-hmm. it would be established as that's a way to die. But that, they didn't pick it. They wanted the, the shock of the decapitation. They needed they needed a shark to jump out of the wet pool, which, like, yeah. is that what they're called? Like, they yes. thought wet pool, dry pool. They went with wet pool. Like, why is it called a wet pool? <laughs> Like, of course, I think wet. in the first film they have a wet lab, so the right. the movie there was like we're, we're down in the wet lab, things happening in the wet lab. So that makes just that makes sense as a thing. Wet pool, I'm like it's yeah. a pool. <laughs> like, yeah, you gonna, don't get a lot of dry wet. pools. <laughs> now I, I know it like, in these creature features this always happens, but I would love a MythBusters episode about the timing of the shark because the shark rips off Mike's head cleanly and doesn't drag Mike with him, so it's. A, it's a really interesting timing and logistics jump. Like, this shark knew what it was doing perfectly to not... <laughs> just, just blows my mind. Very sharp teeth. So, was, was this the shark's entire plan? Was it to knock Mike out, have him be dragged back, and then to decapitate him? I imagine it must so be. because she'll have knocked him out to the, and then she's probably swam away to be like, feed my children. Come, it's okay. <laughs> Feast on the South African man. But by that point, Trent, while she was talking to her, like, cubs? Babies? I don't know what the shark term for child is. But the little sharklets. And then that in that time, Trent comes... Because I was like, there's no way they're going to kill Trent at the same time. So he's got to save him. But how is this happening? And it'll be because Bella's like, okay, little sharklets, like, let's go eat. And then she turns around and she's like, oh, Bianca, Trent's come in. I'm going to go get a little snick snack for you guys. Yeah. Be right back. And that's where she's like, oh. And then she drags that. I did expect to see more of and i believe this happens more in deep blue sea i wanted more sort of uh, bodies in the water but i feel the budget was quite low on this one so i forgive it it was indeed and there there are definitely a few more bodies that get jumped in the water in, in the first one but mm-hmm. uh baby sharks called pups and she does uh yeah, she it's a precision sharks. cut of that decapitation because she does it in such a way that the rest of the body falls into the water it's beautiful mm-hmm. to thereby provide food for the for the pups she's just she's, she's, it's she's perfectly a good done mom. she's a great yeah. mom and got a and got a snack while she was at it yeah. yeah, everyone Jeez. wins, apart yeah. from Mike. <laughs> Mike had a... Mike loses. Mike, he, he I don't know. Mike... He, he lives for this crap, Does, isn't that what he <laughs> yes, says? This, he's, yeah. he's South African, I live for this crazy ass. Yeah. I love that we had Zanandi on, and she was also <laughs> a big fan of Aaron, but she also lives in South Africa. And she's like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. if you lived she in took Florida, offense to that line. When I lived in Florida, I'm like, I live in Florida. I was born for this. Like, people are like I get it. So I don't know. Maybe there's a similarity there. But yeah, yeah. I don't. I, don't I didn't know. really get it. I was like, oh, fair enough. I love that it's a female main, a protagonist and a female antagonist. And part of me really wanted. It doesn't quite pass the Bechdel test in that when Misty is talking to Leslie, they're talking sort of about the fact that they're a married couple. So you could argue that they're talking about Daniel, but. I talk, think there's enough Durant of the conversation well. there that, like, or about, yeah, Carl, it's Carl, that kills people. So um, I don't think it quite passes the Bechdel test. So I was really, part of me was like, come on, movie, jump, jump the, like, Bella, do a jump and, like, start talking and, like, start talking to Misty. Like, please, just, like, have learnt human speech and just pass the Bechdel test by talking to Misty, please. Hey, Misty, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing really well, Bella. How are you? How about this weather? Oh, the weather's great. Boom. No, done. it'd be like, I've read some of your research, Misty, and I really enjoyed it. I think um, you and I could have You're a wrong about these points in the future. Yeah. 